ended up having a hard time uploading a 30 minute Zoom call last night, but I'm glad that we do a little um, practice number two. This is round number two, trying to do it. Yep. I am Rebecca. I have been doing a, um, I have been creating my channel for five years and I have 450 videos. So Whoa. I'm so glad that I inspired you to create your own channel and I'm so excited to keep on watching your videos when you make them. I did a, I mean, I've been only doing this for like a week. But so. you're doing really good though. You know how no, you I'm, actually, I'm having fun editing the videos. Like last night, I, I posted a video of our Africa trip. I saw that. I saw that last night. Of like, and now it's a kind of too, because you can move the things around. So it's like if you edit the clips, you can move it around. Oh, wow. And so I was like, okay, timing wise, I don't know if all them, them, they are in order, but I don't care with that. But I'm like, oh, shoot. I have one clip here in the same clip smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got to delete one of them, but I don't want to delete both of them. So it took a little, then I went to bed. <laughs> yeah, that was a good video. I was really impressed with your skills. I still so, all with the phone app that I'm using. Yeah, on my iPhone, and I have a little tripod that goes in the charger, and I just like, it's hands, hands free. And I've been doing my videos like that. I don't really want to learn how to edit because you know it takes a lot of patience and you have to learn a new skill, which I don't have, but maybe you can teach me. Even though you're doing this for a week, you have more motivation than I do, but I've been doing my videos as one take videos and if I mess up, sometimes I mess up 20 times when filming and I have to start over, but overall- That's what I was doing the first couple of videos. Yeah, but for oh me, gosh. I have been doing yeah. this for five years and so I have, a lot of practice um speaking clearly and coming up with things in my head and I write notes down to my notebook that is really helpful too yeah but this is going to be so exciting to continue this and post it on your channel yeah that's cool yeah i should teach you how to edit the videos if you yeah. get the app yeah, the, like this can be like a podcast. Like it could be easily a podcast and then we can post it on your channel and we have so many topics we can choose from. And I'm just so excited to see your channel grow and just imagine yourself doing this in a year from now. That is what I'm looking forward to too. Well, like, I like back to watching all these videos and I mean, because I watch them after they're posted too. And I'm like, yeah, yay. It was you. It's but in a year, it's going to change, like, in a drastic change. Like, you're going to say, what? Like, I can't believe that I have this on camera. And you're creating memories and you're documenting your life. And I have more experience doing YouTube. And I know everyone has different boundaries, different levels of how they want to share their videos. And I am pretty much an open book when it comes to YouTube now. I share pretty much almost everything that is public that I want to share. I do keep things private to myself before I go through and make sure I want to post it to YouTube. But I feel like I share some personal things about like my disability, my travels, my animals, raising a rooster and giving it away. So I feel like I've been pretty wait, wait, personal you on rooster? YouTube. Chicken. Yeah, I have a rooster now. Okay, I'm more I more used to have a rooster. Oh, you used to have a rooster. Yeah, and they documented raising them as little baby chicks since they were two days old. But oh, it makes me emotional going back on my channel and going through the videos because I just can't believe of all the amazing experiences I went through. And I I'm go back to your, your very first video. Videos. I mean, I have to look for it because I didn't know you had 400 and something videos. Yeah, 450. I thought, That's a big monster. I've watched a lot of your videos and I'm like, I bet there's more. That I yeah, can. you can easily get lots of ideas on my channel if you want more ideas to film. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if people want to know, know me as a person, go on YouTube and then that's a good way to know me. 
because I'm usually open on Facebook and on YouTube about my life than anything else. That's good. I throw a lot of pictures now via Facebook and stuff. Yeah, I document my life on Facebook constantly too, but YouTube is a good way if you want to save on videos. Yeah, because when every single time I post a video, I yeah. tell like my relatives, family members, so it's like, go watch it and see why. <laughs> it's fun, but I feel like for me, I feel like I made my own YouTube channel for my sake, for looking back on my life. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I was bored. Yeah, and I was bored. I just needed something to do, and now I can like edit videos. If I record on my phone, I can edit the videos on my phone before I post it, and that keeps me occupied for like thirty minutes. Yeah, and well, of this virus going around. Um, there's a lot of free time. I'm a college student, so I have homework I have to do every week, and I see my support providers that work for me in person. So I have some commitments, but I feel like I'm. This is ten weeks of isolation. Ten. Weeks. Yeah. I thought it was week eight, but I think week eight was. Like it's two. been two and a half months that I haven't stepped in any grocery stores. I haven't been in any public places. I haven't been in anyone anyone's houses. So I feel like YouTube is a good way to document your life, especially during this time. And yeah. I'm so grateful to just have ideas in my head constantly and writing them in my notebook and then posting them on YouTube. So I feel like it's great if you have nothing to do, it can pass the time and you create memories on one. Yeah. But I'm just it's so excited. It's on my calendar because I post, I, I say, say stuff on my calendar. I want to see the last time. Do you remember the last time we actually got together? It was like at least three months ago in person. But I'm glad that we can do YouTube and share our experiences through that platform. Yeah. But yeah, I've been um, quarantined for two and a half months. So, yeah. I think the last time we, I think we, oh, yeah back into like March or something. It's been a long time. Because I remember going to a play and that was on the 7th of March. And then like two weeks later, <laughs> everything shut down. So March, man. March. Yeah, I got back from Chicago. I went to Chicago before this happened. And surprisingly, I got back from Chicago in, um, I'm going back. I got back from Chicago May, not May, but March 9th was when I got back from Chicago because I was visiting my grandma with my parents. And we literally got back and we had like a few days once we got back from our trip and then boom that's when everything got shut down and all the restrictions got made yeah so it was like interesting because i got back a day later and then all these changes happened right then and there so it was just surprising how it could happen so quickly and we made it back to my house when all this happened yeah it's crazy. Like, I, I talk to people now, like, via text and stuff. It's like, i just like, how are you doing? Yeah. And then, like, it's been the same. And I was like, same here. I haven't, there's nothing new about me. Yeah. <laughs> nothing different, nothing new. Well, another thing I've been doing to pass the time and to get my anxiety levels more stable and even is just going on drives. I feel like driving is just a good therapeutic way to just release your emotions listen to loud, loud music in the car and just I we, I live in the city I live in Portland Oregon in the city and I feel like it's nice to just drive on fast country roads like outside of the city and go to suburbs that you haven't been to so I've been doing that a few times a week for the last three weeks I don't drive that much I mean I don't yeah I don't get out that much but I like driving 
Yeah. But I also, my gas tank is low low right now. And I'm like, I don't want to, I've been telling my parents they should take my car to the gas station. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me because I'm like, they did because Oregon has the law that you can't pump your own gas. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. And then it's like, I don't know how to pump my own gas. You want to hear my gas stories? Yeah, I, I, I my own gas. Um, I went to Montana the summer after I graduated high school for something, and I'm like, okay, I'm basically on my own. I, um, what is it? I the first time I attempted to pump my own gas, I'm like standing there looking at the machine. It's like, okay, what do I do? I put the, I paid for it. I attempted to pay for it. I'm like, I'm not swiping my credit card, you know, so many times. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to lock it on into the thing, the Mart thing. I'm like standing in line, just waiting. And I get up to the guy and I was like, hi, my, I don't know how to fill up my gas tank. I'm from Oregon. So I don't like I made that clear. So he had to come up and help me. And then I think that's the same, t- same trip, same, same place. I got to paid for my gas, everything. I got the, the nozzle thing, you know, the, yeah, you know, what, 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 the thing that you put in the, yeah, I don't know what you the call thing. it, the thing, um, the gas pump thing. I put it in my car and I'm like, how do you start it? <laughs> And you I couldn't figure out how to start it because <laughs> I don't know. And then, it and then well, I got that now, but then several years later, um, I went dropped my sister off at school across the country. Um, so it's like cool. I have I I'm still young enough. I'm too young to rent a car but we paid extra so I could rent a car so I could drive my yeah. sister and I'm like okay you're required to fill up the gas tank before you drop it back off at the airport because then they're going to charge you extra money like this yeah you know what happened I couldn't figure it out mm. I went inside I was right by the airport too so I gave myself plenty of time to drop off my car just because I knew I had to get gas and return it all to that stuff. It's a long process. Oh my gosh, it's it's ridiculous. It drove me nuts because the lady that came out and helped me, she was like, are you serious? Well, you yeah, I'm a native. I'm from Oregon. I mean, I didn't say this, but I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. thinking this. I'm from Oregon. It's stressing me out, you know? to pump my own gas so when I actually yeah so I don't pump my own gas yeah we never grew up with that skill we don't I mean if you grew time. up if you grew up in Oregon I and mean, if you learned how to drive in Oregon like I did same with me you did you just like drive up to the gas station roll down your window wait for the guy to come out give you the, the card say I want to fill, I want to fill my tank up please they give you the receipt, and then you're on your way. And, like, if it's, like, you can be in a car. Like, if it's snowing, rainy, hailing, you can be in a car. And that's, like, a privilege that we get when we don't have to fill yeah. up ourselves. Just, like, when we take, we did road trips younger. When we were younger, we did road trips. We would to California because my family relatives live over there. We'd, like, drive down to California. And my mom, like, just as she crosses the border... We pull up to the gas station. We're not old enough to drive. Back then, we weren't. And she's just sitting in the car. Like, you have to get out and pump your own gas. I mean, we have to remind her, but we don't know how to, like, if you threw me out, like, in California to pump your gas for you, 